excellence on the inside. This is wonderful. That he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. To be strengthened with dunamis, strengthened with might by the Holy Ghost in the inner man. He wants you to be strengthened in your inner man. Energized on the inside. You find sometimes we are weak in prayer. Why? Let me tell you this. As the outward man can be weak, so the inward man can be weak. The inward man can be so weak and unable to control the outward man. So weak. You want to pray, but you cannot gather yourself together to do it. You want to win souls, but you can't gather yourself enough to do it. Your spirit is not energized. Your spirit is not strengthened. It's not strong. You're weak. And God knows when we go through such a phase in our lives. And that's not a promise for us. We don't have to go through it. So he says, I pray to God that he will grant you according to the riches of his grace, his glory, to be strengthened with might. Strengthened. To be made strong with dunamis, the power of God. Inherent power. To be made strong on the inside. By the Holy Ghost. In our inner man. He wants our inner man to be strengthened. If your inner man is weak, there's so many things you can't do. If your inner man is weak, you can't go for the word of God. You can't go for the scriptures. You can't receive rhema. Too weak to receive rhema. Sometimes we have to pray for hours to receive rhema. Because a lot of times we have to pray and get rid of the distractions around us. Because you know, as you begin praying, you're like you're in the outer courts. As you're praying. See, because you're still in your body realm. You, you, you feel some itching, you feel some sweating, you know, you want to put on the AC, you want to go out, you know, the place is smelling, stinking, you're thinking of all kinds of things, so you're uncomfortable. See, because your senses are still working. See? And then you just keep praying, and if you continue praying enough, you'll be able to master that, and then your mind goes higher. You understand? And then, if you will persist before long, your spirit will gain the mastery. Your spirit will gain the ascendancy. Then you begin to speak spiritual words. And it's in that realm that you get a hold of Rima. So it may take you several, several hours to pray. To finally get Rima from God. But so he tells us to have our spirit strengthened. He says, I pray to God that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory. To be strengthened with might. Might, might, dunamis, inherent power. Power that reproduces itself. With moral excellence, with spiritual excellence. There's a dynamite on the inside of you. Hallelujah. Inside you. Strengthened with might in your inner man. Your inner man made strong. Praise God. Your inner man made strong. When your inner man is made strong, you love to praise God. When your inner man is made strong, you just study the word of God and you keep digesting this thing. Hallelujah. When your inner man is made strong, it's not hard for the Holy Ghost to get you to talk to somebody about Jesus. It's not hard. When your inner man is weak, you'll be there wrestling. Should I talk or should I not talk? Should I open my mouth or should I not? Oh, and while you're still arguing, it's all over. The fellow is gone. There's, oh, I wish I did it. Your inner man was weak. But God wants your inner man to be strengthened. Strengthened with divine enablement. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Uh, let's, go, let's go on here. Hmm. Verse, verse 17. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. 
That's, that's where it is again. Dwell. Same word I read to you earlier. Where it says, my father that dwelleth in me. He says that Christ may dwell in your hearts. That means that Christ may settle in you to govern. That he may settle in you to take charge of your life. Hallelujah. That ye being rooted, huh, I like this, and grounded in love may be able to comprehend. Now this word helps us understand further what Rhema really means. He says that Christ, 17 into 18, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints. The word comprehend here, narrowly for us, means to be able to understand, perceive. But that's not what he's talking about. He's saying something deeper than this. The Greek says katalambano. What does that mean? What does that mean? It means to take a hold of something and make it personal to you. It means to arrest it and take possession. You get it? It means that you have arrested it. You have apprehended it. And you have made it yours. You see, that, that's, that's exactly what he wants us to do about God's word. When Rhema comes to you, you make it yours. You make it yours. You make it yours. I don't say he's talking to us. He's not talking to James. He's not talking to Isaiah. He's not talking to three of us. He's talking to me. That you may be able to arrest, to apprehend, and personalize. He says, take possession and make it yours. Make it yours. When it becomes yours, Jesus says, then let it remain in you. Then you can ask what you will. Even if it doesn't exist, I'll produce it. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Lord Jesus. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that he being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height and to know. There it is again, ginosko, meaning to understand fully a complete knowledge, a revelation knowledge. You know the inside and the outside, the intricacies, you understand. You understand what I'm talking about? It becomes experiential knowledge. To know the love of Christ. This is not that you read about it. You have come to know it. Hallelujah. An acquaintance. That's what he's saying. Thank you, Lord Jesus. May be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height and to know the love of Christ which surpasses knowledge. It surpasses knowledge. So how are you going to know something that surpasses knowledge? Through the Holy Ghost. So it's a relationship from your spirit. A relationship from your spirit. Your spirit gains the ascendancy. You are no longer of this realm. You look at life from above. You see things differently. Jesus has become your personal friend. Do you understand what I'm talking about? You have come to know by acquaintance the love of Christ. We're not talking about reading about it. You've come to know. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Huh. Let's read it. Verse 19. And to know the love of Christ which surpasses knowledge that he might be filled with the fullness of God. The fullness here means full measure. Full measure. What does that mean? He's referring to a cargo ship. And then there is a definite weight for its load. And that means the whole cargo and all the crew. Everything. And they said this is maximum load. 
maximum. Anything beyond this is dangerous. This is maximum loads. Now Paul uses that expression here and says that we might be filled with the maximum load of God. Hey, hey, hey go ahead again. Maximum load. <laughs> Woo! Oh, my. Maximum loads. That means every fiber of my being. That means every bone of my body. That means every cell of my blood. God on the inside. In other words, nothing should be out. Be filled with the maximum load of God. <laughs> Glory to God. <sighs> to know the love of Christ, which surpasses knowledge, that he might be filled with the maximum load of God. You know you're a vessel? You're a vessel. The Bible says we're vessels. We're vessels. Ha ha, brother. Ha ha. Ha ha. Go with a God. Woo! Yeah. We are, we are God conveyors. We convey God. We are vessels. Bearers of the divine order. Can you say amen? amen? And so you have to be you have to be filled with maximum load. Maximum load, brother. Don't you move until you are fully loaded. Hey, glory to God. Hey, hallelujah. Loaded. Loaded. Fully loaded. Take the maximum load of God. Filled with the fullness of God. Maximum load. Hey, hey! Woo! Glory! Ay, 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 ay. That means I can go to people and say, Glory to God, I'm here with God's maximum load. I'm loaded with God. And I shake their hands, I'm loaded with God. I'm full. Glory to God. Wow! Feel with God's maximum loads. Maximum loads. <laughs> so everywhere you go, the anointing will be there. Why? Because you're there, filled with the maximum load of God. The fullness of God. Hey, yeah, yeah. You know, you know, Paul said that. He said, when I come to you, I'm going to come with the fullness of the blessings of Christ. Paul understood. You can walk around <laughs> with the maximum load of God. Man, oh man. What? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Woo, boy. Maximum load. I feel this thing all over me right now. I feel the anointing. My goodness, I feel it. I feel it all over me. It's maximum load tonight. <laughs> Glory. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. There's more. Huh. And to know... Verse 19, to know the love of Christ which surpasses knowledge, that he might be filled with all the fullness of God. Then he says in verse 20, I love it. Now, woo. <laughs> mm. Mm. 
He says, now, unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power hey, 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 hey. to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. Did you hear that? Now watch this. There's something I want to show you here that's very important. Something important. It's significant and we must see it. Hallelujah. It says, Now unto him that is able to, to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, then he says, according to the power that worketh in us. Now, listen. What is God saying? What is God saying? He is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. But he says to us, he's doing is according to the power that worketh. Now the word worketh means operative. According to the power that is operative in us. Now, what is he saying? God is saying that his power to produce has to work from here, not from there. Did you get it? The power by which God is going to perform that miracle is not coming from heaven. It's in you. He says to us, listen, he says it depends it depends on the operation of the power in you. It depends on how much that power is working in you. That power is already in you. It depends on how much it is operative inside you. Now, for me, that means I already know I've got the power in me. But he's telling me I've got to put it to work. That the amount of power that will be displayed in the miraculous would depend on how that power is operative in me. Hallelujah. So what should I do then? Put it to work. Make it operational. Make it operational. Mm. Now I'll read that last verse and then we get into making it operational. You getting ready tonight? Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, war without end. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, are you ready to make that power operative? You sure you're ready? Turn to 1 Corinthians. <laughs> you want Rama? Yeah. Oh. Who? Who? 
Who? Who? Nah. Nah. First Corinthians chapter number 14. <laughs> First Corinthians chapter number 14. In verse 2 he says, For he that speaketh <laughs> listen, listen to this. Listen to this. He says, He that speaketh in an unknown tongue, listen, He that speaketh in an unknown tongue, Speak it not unto men. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue, speaketh not unto men. He's telling you at this level, you're not talking to men. Brother, you, if you have something serious to deal with, turn your face away from men. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue, speaketh not unto men. You turn your face away from men. Because they can't help you now. They can't help you now. The Bible says Hezekiah, when he was in a fix, he turned his face to the wall. He turned away from men. Turn his face to the wall and began to pray. And God heard him. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men. This is not a man word communication, he says. Now you're not talking to men. This matter is now serious. Now you're not talking to men. You know, you know, you've got to get a house now. You know, it's just a few more days. You know, you've got to get money now. You know, you know, you need a job now. You know, you've got to get it now. So what? You turn your face away from men. You have had it. It's time to stop explaining to your friends. This is not going to work anymore. Hallelujah. It's time to stop explaining to everybody and anybody. No more explanation. You have already told everybody and they haven't done nothing. Now you look at this. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men. Turn your face away from men now. Are you listening to me now? You know you want to save your family. You know you got a baby that needs to be saved from trouble. You know you have a child that's dying and needs a miracle. It's time to turn your face away from men. Now look at this. <laughs> For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue, speak it not unto men, but unto God. Why? Because nobody understands him. 
I mean, I've told everybody they couldn't do anything about it. It's time to stop talking to them. Speak a language that only God understands. You know what? You say you need Rhema. You need to hear from God. So you turn your face away from men. You turn your face to God. But when you turn your face to God, you have to speak the language of God. <laughs> you understand what I'm talking about now? You see, you don't have enough words. You don't have enough vocabulary to express yourself to God. So you're going to have to talk in other tongues. Are you hearing me now? All right, let's look at this. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue, speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understandeth him. No man understandeth him. No man understandeth him. Why? Because he's talking in tongues. He's talking to God. He's speaking God's language. Hey, come on. Just give me a few more minutes. Relax. You've got to catch this now. You've waited all week for this. I said you've waited all week for this. You need it now. Just get yourself ready. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue, speaketh not unto men, but unto God. Unto God. Say that with me, unto God. God. Say it again, unto God. God. One more time. (laughs) He that speaketh in an unknown tongue, speaketh not unto men, but unto God. The attention of the Spirit has changed. Now he's not speaking to men, he is speaking to God. Are you hearing this? He's no longer speaking to men. He's speaking to God. And because he is speaking to God, he is given utterance by the Holy Ghost. Brothers and sisters, this is why we need the Holy Ghost. When you have talked to men and they have been unable to help you, and you make up your mind you want to talk to God, you don't have enough earthly vocabulary. The Holy Ghost has to help you, brother. So he gives you a language to help you communicate with the Father. He gives you a language that is holy. He gives you a language that is heaven made. A language that you can express God, respects God's word in articulate speech. A heavenly language, not earthly expression. You are not picking human words. You are picking God's words. Now look at this. Human words are made by men. And so they are not perfect for us to express ourselves to God. And so when you talk in human words to God, you give Him words that are unclean. That holy hour comes when you need. You need a communication from heaven. So the Holy Ghost knowing this, Gives you a tongue to express yourself. I love the Holy Ghost. He gives you a language to express yourself. When you begin to speak in those tongues, everything that you say is articulately communicated to God. Everything that you say. And then a two-way communication. As you speak to God, He speaks to you. As you speak to God, He speaks to you. There is a prayer language. Understand this. There's a prayer language. That we, you know, we speak in other tongues. Every one of us prays in tongues like that. But this is not the one I'm talking about. I'm talking about when the Holy Ghost takes over. Hallelujah. I'm talking about when the Holy Ghost takes over and you begin to speak from your inner man. And as you pour forth words from your inner man, 
something happens. I want to show it to you now. Are you ready to see it? Look at it. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue, speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understandeth him, how be it in the realm of the Spirit, he speaks mysteries. Hold on. Hold on. This is, this is marvelous. I'm telling you, this is just marvelous. He says, when you speak in other tongues like this, nobody understands you. But in the Spirit, you are speaking mysteries. What are mysteries? He means hidden secrets. You are speaking hidden secrets. Hidden secrets. Hidden secrets. They are divine secrets. Divine secrets having to do with God's plans for your life. Having to do with God's plans for things that concern you. Maybe, there are people, maybe your loved ones, maybe your friends, maybe your neighbors, those for whom you are praying. He says, God's secrets concerning them are being spoken by you. Now, when those secrets are being spoken, you need interpretation. You need interpretation. Without the interpretation, you may just talk. And be blessed. Let me read something to you. You ready to see this? From verse, same chapter, same book. From verse 13. Wherefore let him that speaketh in an unknown tongue pray that he may interpret. Why? He says pray that you may interpret. So that it can be brought to the understanding. You see, others don't understand you when you speak in other tongues. And you don't understand yourself when you speak in other tongues. So you have to pray that you may interpret. So that the anointing will cause those words to come to your understanding. To come to your understanding. And when those words come to your understanding, that's Rema. That's Rhema. That's Rhema. You know, sometimes I'm praying. And while I'm praying, and I'm speaking in tongues, I come to the understanding that what I'm saying is divine secrets. I'm uttering divine secrets. I'm uttering God's hidden plan about something. I just know on the inside now I'm talking, I'm talking divine secrets. I'm speaking coded language. Are you hearing me? But you know, I need to download this thing. I need to download this thing to my mental computer. I need to download it to my understanding. Because until I download it, I may not know how to function with it. And so I'm praying. And then, suddenly, my spirit begins to pick it. My spirit begins to pick it. Look at this. He says, verse 14, For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth, but my understanding is unfruitful. My understanding is unfruitful. What is it then? I'll pray with the spirit, and I'll pray with the understanding also. I'll sing with the spirit, and I'll sing with the understanding also. You have to understand that he's not talking about a different prayer. Listen. Some of us, what we think this is, is when we talk in tongues, then we now pray a prayer in our understanding. No, that's not what he's saying. He's talking about interpreting what you prayed in tongues. That's what he's saying. This man is not dealing with mental prayer here. He's saying that when you pray in the Spirit, you should pray in the understanding also. Why? From the 13th verse, he says, if you don't know how to interpret, pray to God so that you can begin to interpret. 
So when you pray in the Spirit, you bring it to your understanding also. When you sing in the Spirit, you bring it to your understanding also. Sometimes I sing in the Holy Ghost. When I sing in the Holy Ghost, I get it, I get it, I get it in my, in my understanding. I get to know exactly what I'm singing about. That's where the blessing is. If you thought you were blessed when you spoke in tongues, wait till you understand what you were talking about. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, one time praying in the Holy Ghost, and you know, and this is talking in tongues, talking in tongues, talk, just like that, talking in tongues, speaking in other tongues, in that heavenly language, and then suddenly the interpretation came forth, yeah, and in three months, yeah, and in three months, three months, three months. What's three months? What do you mean three months? What do you mean three months? He said, a new anointing cometh, a new anointing cometh. In three months, you rise and begin to walk. Glory to God. He is talking about a new realm of life. There's an anointing. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. And here you are praying in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And suddenly the Holy Ghost helps you. You begin to speak in other tongues. But you don't know what you're talking about. But you're speaking in other tongues. Yes, your spirit is edified. You're being energized, strengthened. Glory to God. On the inside, you're being strengthened by the Holy Ghost. But with that strength, you have to learn to get a hold of the signal and pull that thing as rhema to your spirits. Because God is talking to you. Then you find out, before things happen around you, you've settled them. Hallelujah. You've settled them already. So it's going to the office. And then while you're praying, 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 the Holy Ghost says, you're out of your job. <laughs> no. I'm, I'm, I don't know why this thought is coming to me. Stop thinking and stop discussing it. No man will understand this kind of thing. Turn to God. Turn to God. Begin to speak in the Spirit. When you speak in the Spirit and bring that thing over to Him, then you'll get the divine plan. The divine plan. I'm taking you two steps further. Praise God. See, there's something about the Holy Ghost. He doesn't destroy His children. He doesn't. He doesn't destroy His own children. The Bible says, he that troubles his house shall inherit the wind. So God doesn't trouble his own house. Because he don't want to inherit the wind. We are his inheritance. Hallelujah. And so that, that, that spirit, that anointing helps you. Turn to chapter 2, 1 Corinthians. Quickly now. Quick now. Quickly now. Quickly, quickly. Here's where we round off into the realm of God's Spirit. You get ready because you are just going to blow up now. <laughs> First Corinthians chapter 2. How be it we speak wisdom? <laughs> we speak wisdom. What do you mean wisdom? These are the divine secrets. They're called wisdom. Did you hear me? They're called wisdom. We speak wisdom among them that are mature. Perfect, King James says. Yet not the wisdom of this world. Not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Didn't we read that? He that speaketh in an unknown tongue, speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understandeth him. How be it in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. Now he says, we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. So when we utter mysteries, we are speaking the wisdom of God. What do you mean the wisdom of God? The wisdom of God in your peculiar situation. What do you mean by the wisdom of God? Maybe you have one blind eye and you were born that way. What is the wisdom of God in producing the second eye to have sights? What is the wisdom of God in destroying cancer from your body? 
What is the wisdom of God in helping you get pregnant? You've been trying to get pregnant and you couldn't help it. So now, what is the wisdom of God? You need Rhema. And you know the wisdom of God is the Word of God. And now he says we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, in esoteric language. First, as we meditate on the Word, like I told you, we can pull out Rhema. Again, apart from meditation, we can also get Rhema from our praying. As we pray in the Holy Ghost, we can receive Rhema. So here we are. It says, we speak wisdom among them that are perfect. Yet not the wisdom of this world, nor the princes of this world are come to not. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Even the hidden wisdom. I like this. Even the hidden wisdom. Which God ordained before the world for our glory. He ordained it for our glory. So that no matter where we find ourselves, brothers and sisters, let me show you something. It doesn't matter what your case is. Just forget it. It doesn't matter where you are in life. It doesn't matter. You may be the brokest fellow there is. It doesn't matter. <laughs> you know what you need? I'm waiting for Rama. And every now and then, Masoda Bahaya. What am I looking at? God. Brother, what do you see? Nothing but God. I'm looking at God. See, I made up my mind to set my gaze on him. I've set my gaze on him. As I meditate on the word. <laughs> Can I read something to you? He says, God is faithful. By whom you were called unto the fellowship of his son Jesus Christ. Now, as I meditate on that... God is faithful by whom ye were called, ye were called unto the fellowship of his son, Jesus. That means unto partnership, participation, communion. Hmm. God is faithful by whom ye were called unto partnership, fellowship, communication, communion. Huh. Hmm. Did you say God is faithful? Yeah. He is faithful. By whom ye were called. You mean I was called into partnership, into fellowship, into oneness. My God! Yeah! Glory! Woo! Call! Hey! Call! Into partnership. Hallelujah! 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 Do you understand what he's talking about? You know, you come to that point. You've been meditating on it. God is faithful by whom you were called into fellowship, partnership, participation, togetherness, union, communion. That means, oh, I get it now. I get it now. No wonder Paul said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. The life that I live now, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Hi, now I know. I am not alone. Can you see that? You see, it's come to me as a rhema. It's come to me as Rhema. God is talking to a lady here. They said you'll never have a child. But the word is coming to you right now. You are about to have a baby. I said you are about to have a baby. 
You are about to have a baby. You are about to have a baby. Hallelujah. Yes, you're going to have a baby. You're going to have a child. That miracle is on its way right now. Hallelujah. Ma. Glory to God. Glory to God. I feel the anointing here tonight. I said, I feel the anointing here tonight. Somebody's breast cancer has just died. That cancer is dead. That cancer is out of your body. You are healed in the name of Jesus. Oh, that's really my word for you. That's really my word for you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. I see a miracle in your finances. I see a miracle in your finances. I see a miracle in your finances. I see a miracle taking place in your finances. The Rhema word has gone forth. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 There's a mother that's been praying for. You've been praying for your young son suffering from sickle cell anemia. I said there's a word for you tonight. Your boy is healed. I said your boy is healed. Hallelujah. Woo, glory to God. Ha. Glory to God. There's a word for somebody tonight. Receive that word. Receive that word. Receive that word. I said that job is yours. You've asked for that job. It's yours. It's yours in the name of Jesus. And can I tell you something? Can I tell you something? They're going to pay you more than five times what you used to have before. They're going to pay you more than five times what you used to have before. Glory to God. Oh, glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, miracles are happening tonight. Miracles are happening tonight. Wow. Wow. <laughs> oh. Glory. Open your mouth and bless the Lord. Bless His name. Worship Him and praise Him. Worship Him and praise Him. <laughs> oh, glory.
Amen. 